What is up guys, Broken Running here, and in this video I will be making yet another Jujutsu Kaisen versus battle. Now, as the title and thumbnail may suggest, I will be going over Megami Fushiguru, the 10 Shadows Curse Technique user, versus Suguru Geto, the Curse Spirit Manipulator. Now, specifically in this video, I'm going to be pitting Team Ghetto against current Megami. So, within this video, I will not be scaling anything for Ghetto that has to do with later feats or statements. This is a versus battle that I've seen many people split on, and I decided that it would be a pretty interesting topic to cover on the channel, especially considering the similarities in the two characters' demeanor and abilities. To start this off right, let's dive into the physical abilities of Suguru Ghetto during the Star Plasma Vessel arc, namely his speed, attack potency, and durability. Now when it comes to scaling Geto's durability and general striking power without the help of Curse Spirits, he is severely lacking a pool of good feats, seeing as how he really only gets into two fights during this flashback arc. Geto's first fight within this arc does display a general level of proficiency in close quarters combat and lends credence to the idea that he should be able to hold his own against your average sorcerer, but when taken into account that his opponent is a no-name Shikigami user, this feat doesn't do much in the way of quantifying how hard he hits or how fast he is within the context of combat. The second fight that he participates in is against Toji, and... Well, in terms of displaying durability or striking power, he lacks in this fight as well. Unfortunately for him, Toji outclasses him by such a ridiculous margin that you actually can't get any physical feats for Geta within this fight. We see that he makes an attempt to attack Toji, which is countered, and before he can gather himself again, Toji slices through Geto two times and follows out with a knockout kick to the head. Now, surviving three separate attacks from Toji at once would be a solid durability feat, or at least an endurance one, but we learn in the next few pages that Toji intentionally did not kill Geto because he doesn't know what happens to Curse user spirits when they die. Now, while Geto is essentially featless when it comes to his AP and durability, he does have a few decent speed feats that are worth noting. The primary one comes from Chapter 71, in which Geto seems to be able to unleash a Shikigami that is fast enough to engulf Toji and temporarily remove him from the fight. Now, this doesn't exactly correlate to his physical speed, but this does show him generally having good reaction feats and speed feats of releasing his cursed spirits. A possible counter argument to this feat in particular is the fact that Toji seems to have already leaped into the air before the launching of the cursed spirit and therefore had no way to dodge regardless of speed. However, for the sake of being charitable to Geto, I think it's fair to say that he was able to catch Toji slightly off guard with his technique activation speed. This isn't to say that he's relative to Toji by any means, but considering Toji's ridiculous physical stats, even getting him off guard is more than impressive. The other pretty important feat to mention is Geto's ability to use his cursed spirit to intercept a bullet or several bullets from Toji's firearm. Now, whether this was because he already knew the trajectory of the bullet or truly reacted to them after they were fired is very hard to determine, so like I said earlier, I'll be charitable to Geto and assume that he was able to react to the bullets in some way, shape, or form. So at this point, we have Geto being able to react to gunfire and under the proper conditions being able to tag Toji once. In terms of pure physical showings, it's not the best, but luckily for Geto, a majority of his strength does not lie in his physical stats, but his hacks and technique. Now in terms of his general abilities, it's pretty simple. His curse technique is Curse Spirit Manipulation, and this allows him to summon and control a plethora of spirits that he could use to fight at a range, or even use to help him within close quarters combat. Now, we don't know the total amount of curse spirits that Geto possessed at this point in time, so for the sake of simplicity, we'll just be assuming that he can only summon the ones he did in the flashback. In this arc, Geto has curse spirits that have a variety of different functions and abilities, ranging from non-combative curses used for transportation, two curses so strong that they are able to impose their innate domain over reality. The most powerful or useful curse spirits that Geto seems to have at his disposal is this massive worm that can swallow Toji whole and fill an entire hallway, a curse spirit called Rainbow Dragon which has the hardest get out of all of his curses, a squid curse spirit that can be used to defend against things like bullets, and a vengeful curse spirit powerful enough to even damage Toji within its innate domain. Overall, Geto has a pretty diverse moveset and has the intelligence to utilize it properly, as seen in Chapter 68 where he is able to bait a Shikigami user into getting close and getting absolutely bodied. At this point in the story, it's not known whether or not he has a maximum curse technique, so I'll once again have to conclude for the sake of the video that he either doesn't have it or simply does not use it in character at this point in the story. With Geto being scaled and with his hacks being gone over, it's time to see how Megami Fushiguro stacks up. 
When it comes to Mega B in the strength and durability department, he's almost right alongside Ghetto in terms of being disappointing. Just like with Ghetto, for the most part, Mega B's attacking power is dependent on his curse technique and his hacks in general. In regards to his durability, we see him take explosions from the technique of an old sorcerer and continue to fight at near power. For physical strength, he's able to decimate a random curse user within the culling games and is able to batter them until they are dead and he gains their points. With the curse tool in hand, he's also able to deflect several attacks that were strong enough to damage Divine Dog, one of the most powerful attack types Shikigami in his arsenal. Generally speaking, however, Megami just isn't that strong, but what he lacks in strength, he really, really makes up for in speed. You see, since Shibuya, Megami has shown some ridiculous feats of speed and just generally has become a character who can rely on combinations built on speed and hacks. To cover some of the basics, he's able to keep pace with Maki in their dual attack versus Hanami. Maki is particularly heralded as a physical combatant, so Megami being able to do this is narratively pretty impressive. Furthermore, within the Shibuya incident arc itself, Megami has combat and reaction feats that are on par, if not slightly better than beginning of Shibuya Yuji's. From chapters 94 through 97, Megami and Yuji fight Awasaka, and in this fight, there are three very important things to consider. The first is that Megami and Yuji seem to be able to sync up their attacks within combat, even though it may be difficult for the both of them, which to me implies some sort of relativity. Even if you dismiss this and say that Yuji Yuji is simply holding back to sync up with Megami, there is a feat here that just demonstrates that Megami has higher speed than Yuji at this point, although the speed difference is likely slight. Which is how we get to the second aspect that we need to consider within this fight, because there is a point where Awasaka attacks both Yuji and Megami at point blank range, and both characters are able to dodge it. However, a few things are important to note. The first is that Yuji got skimmed by Awasaka's blade, meaning that while he was able to dodge for the most part, he did take some minor damage. In comparison, Megami not only escapes from the attack without a scratch, but he's able to summon a Shikigami and position it for a counter. This feat right here implies that they are at bare minimum on equal footing, with Megami arguably being higher at this point because he was able to dodge unscathed. On top of this, you can't even really argue that it's an outlier because nothing contradicts Megami's feet in this fight, and it's consistently shown that Yuji will take small amounts of damage while in close quarters combat with Awasaka, but Megami never gets hit with an attack head on as he's always shown to either completely avoid it altogether or just block it. This means that Megami at this point in the series scales very solidly above any character Yuji scales above speed wise, which just happens to be a lot of people. This puts Megami in terms of speed well above the likes of Maki and Nanami, who Yuji surpassed long ago, and even pulls him even with characters like Hanami, a special grade curse spirit that Yuji was able to keep pace with in a 1v1. Rather impressive for a sorcerer whose main appeal is his intelligence and axe, if I do say so myself. However, the speed feats don't just stop here. You see, he has one more moment in Shibuya that truly locks him in as a very fast character, and that is his fight versus Toji. Within the very short Toji vs Megami fight, we have a couple of feats for Megami here. The first comes from him being able to dodge a charge attempt from a bloodlusted Toji. And while this does not directly mean that he's faster than Toji's physical speed himself considering the distance between the two, this is especially impressive considering his massive nerf from the domain expansion he just opened. On top of this, we have Megami's Toji Gami being able to extend its tongue and grab Megami before Toji can finish his swiping attempt, which is stupidly impressive considering just how close they were in this specific encounter. And the final feat that comes from the Toji fight comes from him when focusing, being able to perceive Toji attempting to blitz him, and Megami even being able to grab a hold of him temporarily. Once again, I'm not saying fatigue Megami scales above Toji in speed, however it is something worth mentioning considering Toji has fought both of these combatants that I'm scaling. Now, you can interpret Megami's feats here in one of two ways. Either he has just enough perception and reaction speed while fatigued to not die against a bloodlusted Toji, or his intellect and the ability to read his opponents allows for him to react or avoid those much, much faster than him. Either way, this results in Megami's combat ability speed-wise being extremely impressive. In terms of hacks and general abilities, Megami is right up there with Ghetto in terms of diversity. He possesses the 10 Shadows Curse technique, which allows him to manipulate shadows and summon a plethora of Shikigami that can help him in combat in various ways. With Megami's technique, we see he's able to manipulate shadows and even drop himself into shadows with enough speed to catch someone like Reggie off guard. A 
character fast enough to react to both Megami and Divine Dog in combat. Speaking of Divine Dog, this is by far Megami's most lethal, tamed Shikigami in combat, as it has consistently shown physical speed and strength well above the likes of Megami himself. Divine Dog shows the ability to damage Hanami, who is a special grade with a particularly tough composition. Megami also favors using New Wave for transportation and the stunning of his opponents using its electrified cursed energy. One Shikigami speed feed that is actually very impressive is Megami's Toe Shikigami, which I mentioned earlier, was able to extend its tongue to grab Megami and get him out of Toji's attack, which may imply that this particular Shikigami alone would allow for Megami to get out of particularly sticky situations against opponents that are massively, massively faster than him. He also has Rabbit Escape, which he uses to divert opponent's attention and formulate a plan, as shown in the Awasaka fight. He also has Max Elephant, a Shikigami that he uses to blast his opponents with water to disorient them, or as shown in Chapter 168, he can even use the Shikigami being summoned to blast his opponent out of a building by force. And if things ever get too crazy, he can pull out his domain expansion as a trump card that secures him an advantage, even if the domain itself is not complete. As stated by the narrator in chapter 171, when Megami's domain is open, he's actually able to use the 10 Shadows Curse technique to 120% of its full potential, and when in a domain, he can make shadow clones that can bombard and rush his opponents with enough strength to damage a competent old age sorcerer like Reggie. With all of that being said, and both combatants being scaled, we can move on to talking about the outcome of this battle. And when it comes to the end result of this fight, I'm just going to be flat out with you guys. Megami takes it a majority of the time, and 9 times out of 10 is not even that close. Now, at a glance, it may seem like this should be the case, considering that narratively Geto is hyped up to be even with Team Gojo, but when you compare their actual feats, statements, narrative, and general abilities, it becomes pretty obvious why Megami should win. For starters, Geto himself doesn't even have durability feats. The fact of the matter is that he gets taken down by Toji while holding back, and is knocked unconscious without showing any sort of resistant feats to that knocking out. In comparison, Megami at least shows the ability to take hits from a special grade finger bear without passing out and a three finger Sukuna while toying around. Neither of these are insanely great feats by any means, but just the fact that he actually has some durability feats means he's solidly above the likes of Geto in this aspect. In terms of strength, they are probably about even considering that they've only ever beat up fodder with their physical strength alone. And while up to this point Megami and Geto are somewhat similar with Megami only having the durability advantage, the problem comes in when we talk about the speed, hacks, and intelligence of these characters, because in every single one of these categories, Megami utterly dominates Geto. In terms of speed, Megami has feats of keeping pace and even outspeeding Yuji in their Awasaka fight. Yuji not only scales above Maki, but the same Yuji was able to react to Choso's speed of sound piercing blood and is able to fight 1v1 with Hanami for a short period. On top of this, a fatigued Megami shows the ability to react to Toji's attacks numerous times with the help of Ishikigami. In comparison, Geto has one ambiguous feat of catching Toji off guard and otherwise getting absolutely dominated speed wise. Even if we equalize the importance of Megami and Geto's feats and say that they pulled off the same level of thing, the fact that Megami did this while fatigued and Geto did this while being at full power would mean that a hypothetical full power Megami would logically be faster. And if for some odd reason you would argue that Geto just gets access to all of Gojo's speed feats by nature of their rivalry portrayal, you still don't place him above Megami because Gojo doesn't have the ability to track and dodge his movements consistently even with the help of the six size. Keep in mind, both of these characters have been blitzed by Toji before, but Megami not only has more reaction feats on Toji, but he pulls this off while fatigued, which to reiterate, means that a full power Megami should have speed to spare against someone like Geto. Concerning the matter of hacks, Megami also beats Geto out as he has a counter to every cursed spirit in Geto's arsenal. The Flying Stingray, countered by Nue, which has significantly better speed feats and lightning hacks. Geto's Large Worm Shikigami, countered by raw speed or using Max Elephant while inside of it in order to blow it up. Rainbow Dragon, literally featless in terms of durability and would fall to the special grade level attack potency of Divine Dog. Even the Vengeful Curse Spirit can be countered by Megami's domain, seeing as how, even when incomplete, it gives them the ability to counter the effects of Dagon's domain, a domain expansion that is shown to be much more refined, much more potent, and much more powerful than this random Vengeful Curse. One argument I've seen in Geto's favor is that he could simply use Curse Spirit manipulation to absorb and steal Megami Shikigami, however we know that curses with a Master Servant relationship cannot be absorbed until the person 
person in question is killed. This means Shigigami users cannot simply have their summoning absorbed by Geto while in the midst of combat. The final nail in the coffin is intelligence. Because maybe, just maybe, you could argue that even with all these huge disadvantages, if Geto was able to outsmart him, he may be able to outmaneuver Megami. However, Megami has been consistently shown to be one of the smarter characters in the series, quickly and efficiently deducing very complex techniques as well as outthinking the con artist Reggie. Megami shown the ability to deduce Awasaka's inverse, Kirarada's technique, and even deal with someone physically much stronger than him like Toji, all through the use of his intellect and how he decides to apply his hacks. In comparison, Geto, while not stupid, just has one feat of outsmarting some random curse user. All in all, Megami is smarter than Geto, faster than Geto, he hits harder and his abilities are better. Megami Fujiguro wins mid to low difficulty. If you want to see more versus battles like this, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and comment what matchups you want to see down below. And if you want to see my thoughts on this particular JJK versus battle, click here to get my thoughts on the matter.